Hi guys, before we continue with this tutorial series, there's one thing that I wanted to say. Thank you very much, guys. I really appreciate your support because after publishing first six videos of this series, I had great feedback. I have so many people joined my channel and wanting to know more about the deployment of Node.js. It motivates me a lot. It matters to me a lot. And I will do my best to give you more great tutorials. Just leave me the comments about the subject that you want to be covered and I'll do my best to cover them. Thank you. And now let's get back to our subjects. So let's quickly recap where we left off on the last session. On our server, we've got an application running and it is managed by PM2. This is our Node.js app with Samsocket IO and it's also available on Nanogram IO port 8080. If you hit enter, here it will be. If you did the lesson where we set up DNS, you'll also have the DNS name. If you did not, you will have the IP address here. But anyway, the application is running on this port. And this is what bothering me. I don't like to type the port number or put the port number on my business card. I want the application to be available right here, right? Just Nanogram IO. And as you know, in order to do that, you will have your application to be listening to port 80 instead of 8080. And uh, if you worked a little bit with Node.js, let me stop this app right now here. Uh, if you worked a little bit with Node, you probably know that it's not that easy to do that on Linux server. So if I just go to, uh, to my application, let's go to easy IO. And here, if I added my main GS, the file where I bind my application to certain port, and I decide 88 is not good. Let's just bind it to 80, right? And if you now try to run it, all of a sudden you'll see an error like this, eaccess 80, right? What it means, it means that you don't have the access rights to bind to the port 80. In a Linux distributions, port 80 is considered to be a privilege. All the ports below port 10, uh, 24 are considered privileged. So you cannot without special privileges, special access to bind to these ports. If you are root, you will have no problem running this command. But as we talked before, it is a terrible idea to run any of your applications, not just Node.js as root. So we will not even look at typing sudo or running this app as root. It's not our choice. So now let's see what are the different ways to make your application available on port 80 without escalating the privileges because there are multiple ways to do that. So let's see what are our options here. I decided just to list them on one slide, right? So the first one, which is not an option, I, I deliberately decided to put it on the slide and to cross it off. So we don't even think to run anything as root. This is extremely bad idea, right? To run any application on your server as root. Okay, not an option. We're not running as root. So we have this permission problem. The application is not allowed to run on port 80. So what we can do, we can just give the permission to run on this port. You can use leapcap to grant the permission to run on the privileged ports. Instead of giving everything, instead of running as root, you can just configure this particular permission, which is much better option. You can do that, no problem with it. So the next option would be to set up port forwarding. You can use IP tables or firewall D and make sure that all the packets that arrive to port 80 will be magically transferred to port 8080 instead and vice versa, right? So it, this process will be transparent for both your users and your applications. It's relatively easy to configure, but still we will not go with this option. We will take the last option. We will install Nginx. There is an alternative called HA proxy to do the same thing, but we will go with Nginx and we will set it up as reverse proxy. So let's see what it means in practice. So here is how our deployment architecture version one will look like once we install and configure Nginx. Nginx will sit on port 80. It will accept all the connections from the wild, from internet, from all the users. Next, once it gets the connection, it will call Node.js application that is sitting on port 8080. It will transfer all the data from the user to Node.js app and transfer back whatever Node.js tells back to the users. So users will think that they just access your website. They will not know that under there's Nginx sitting and talking to our Node.js app and you will be able to access your application without typing a port on the internet. So this might look like an overkill if your single goal is just to configure your application to run on port 80, this will be an overkill. However, Going with Nginx opens a loads of other options to optimize our deployment on the later phases. So let's look at them. 
Our first possible optimization will be to serve the static files with Nginx instead of doing that with Node.js. Both of them can do that, but Nginx is significantly more effective in doing it. For example, Netflix decided to go with implementation of their own CDNs, content delivery networks, all those computers that are responsible to give you the content from Netflix. They are running Nginx behind the scenes. So this is a really effective solution for serving static files. And Node.js will be just focused on doing what it does best, handling the API calls, handling WebSocket, etc. And the next thing that you will want to do is to add HTTPS and encryption to this picture, because you know that everything that is sent through pure HTTP that is not secured will be easy to sniff. So anyone will be able to see any traffic that travels to your site or from your site back to the users, which is not secure at all. And these days it is so easy to set up HTTPS that we will be able to do that in like one five minutes video with help of Nginx. And the great thing that you will not need to touch Node.js app at all. And on the final stage, we'll do load balancing with the help of same Nginx. So instead of running a single Node.js application, we will be running two or three or tell me the number of Node.js application inside of our server and having Nginx to distribute traffic between them. Because of all these cool features and also because Nginx is often used on the world's most demanding website, we decided to go with this a little bit more complex solution that will pay off really quickly. So let's go to the next videos to see how to make this beautiful setup work on our own servers.